Hello, this is Avery with Ace Dog Academy. Today's video is going to focus on dogs who are about to graduate from our program. And I wanted to make this video for owners to have a reference to go back and look at for some of the basic functions uh, and how to turn this on, charging it of the e-collar, as well as the prong collar. So that way when we have our go home session, we can focus heavily on your dog and how it works for them in very specific uh, training uses for them instead of how does this thing work, right? So let's let's get started there. This is the eCollar Technologies Mini Educator. The high majority of graduates will go home with this as their main tool. Some may have one called the Mini Educator or the Boss. If that's true of your specific dog, they work very, very similar and have honestly the same buttons. There is a black S button, a red S button, and a black T button. On the back, there is an L button, which is the on and off or the light button. And there is a little button that has an M slash C on it here. Okay. And of, of course, there's the dial to control uh, the stimulation levels. So in the morning, <clears throat> when you get up and you go to your dog's crate, I typically charge this in that general area just so it's all together. It's gonna be plugged in, all right? So here's the charger, just plugged in like a normal cord. And on the end of it, there's a Y. So there's actually two cords on the end of it. Those are the plug adapters, those are the charging adapters. So they plug into the remote on the back here. Okay, there's a little rubber flap for waterproof purposes. You would open that up and stick the metal socket in there. Okay. And then on the collar, same thing, to charge it, you would open the, metal, the rubber flap and plug it in. When it is actually plugged into power, both of the lights on the collar and the remote here, or the remote and the collar here turn red, indicating they're charging. They turn green when it is completely charged. Okay. So in the morning, you wake up, you go downstairs, it's charged <clears throat> to, to get it ready to work. I unplug the remote. I make sure that the rubber door is closed. I unplug the collar, okay? And I also shut its rubber door to make sure it's gonna be waterproof if my dog wants to go jump in a creek or, it rain, or it's raining outside. There is a red dot on the top of the collar. There is a red dot on this side of the remote. To turn this collar on, you tap those together, okay? and it turns green, okay? And it flashes green, or it flashes red to indicate this one needs charged, but it flashes green to indicate that it is on. This one here, you would hold the L button in the back, and then it, the screen turns on, turns blue, okay? And they're already synced because I already turned this on, okay? You can turn this on before syncing them, before tapping the red dots together, or after. It's okay. But it is important that you do tap the red dots together and make sure that it works. Okay, and one good way to end it, to know that it's working is dial up to a one, okay? And hit the black S button. Okay, now we know they're working. Then I go and I put it on the dog. Okay. On the dog, anywhere that's not the trachea is acceptable, or anywhere around here, but I highly prefer between the ears and the trachea, okay? I just, there's a big muscle there, and since this is essentially a muscle stimulator, that is a great location for it, okay? A another reminder is to rotate that every four to six hours. That way your dog doesn't develop any uh, pressure spots from these probes, okay? I also want to point out that um, <clears throat> while they're with me, I'll put on the probes that I find the most necessary. So uh, this one has a little bit longer ones on it. Those are the probes. Let me see if I can show you. And they go into the skin, okay? Uh, or well, really the muscle, but they, they should push in pretty tight, okay? The, the number, number one problem with clients is that this is not tight enough. So you're not getting good contact. So your dog isn't feeling a thing. And then what happens is, is 
you dial up a little bit because you're like, oh, they're, they're ignoring me. And then you have this big overreaction because it finally makes contact and the number's way too high for the dog's state of mind. So just be mindful that it should be very tight on your dog's skin. Uh, so much so that when you go to move it, it you can't really move it and it pulls uh, the muscle a little bit with it when you go to move it. Um, that's, that's how tight it should be. And just be mindful to, to move it every four to six hours if, if you leave it on, okay? Well, when you have it on. Uh, it comes off at night when they are asleep in the crate. Uh, if you put it on in the morning for potty time, to, to pra you know practice potty time, to have that communication, you should, you should absolutely do that. And you go to work, eight, nine, 10 hours, I understand, um, then you can take it off while they're in the crate and you're gone. Uh, I do not take it off if I know I'm just like gonna go and go to lunch and come back or I'm only gonna be gone for two or three hours, I'll just leave it on and then take it off you know, at bedtime every night. So off at bedtime and off when you're gone from the home for an extended period of time because there's no need to, to irritate the skin any more than you have to. But if I'm gonna go away for short periods of time or we're just practicing crate time while I'm home, it's gonna be on, okay? Um, that's basically how this uh, e-collar kind of, uh, not, not necessarily how it works, but how you would unplug it in the morning, tap the red buttons together, turn it on, make sure it, it works, and then put it on your dog, okay? So we can see with Juno here, my lovely assistant, her e-collar is on and it's in the right position between the ear and the trachea, but never on the trachea, of course. And do you see how tight it is when I go to move it? It pulls the muscle with it. That's the right side. And then also another check is to take two fingers and, and you should, it should be tight on you, but that's, that's the appropriate amount of looseness if you're worried about it, okay? And I know it's making good contact. Uh, the other tip is, is when it's on, I also nestle it in there. So I first put it on, get to the right tightness and do that with it to kind of shove it past the last few hairs. Good job. So now we're gonna show how the prong collar goes on, okay? So I always look at it like this, okay? So it goes around the neck like this. And there's this little triangular section to it like that. And I don't want this all folded over and entangled. The other thing is, is there is this safety clip that I personally use on, leave on the O-ring, okay? That's the safety ring there. I just leave it on there, but if it gets in your way and it's confusing, you can remove it and put it back on. The leash, I also leave on there. Same thing, if it's confusing, you can take it off. Do the collar itself and then put everything, all the leashes back on. But I leave this on the swivel ring, that's the D ring there. It's the one the leash is on and I personally just leave it on there. When I go to put it on, it goes high, it goes up high, right, basically right behind the ears, of course. Watch out for ears, some big floppy ears, you got little ears. Uh, some dogs with big floppy ears will get caught in there. Um, it's okay to put it on and then just pull their ears out gently. Um, if it's hard to handle both the ears and get it on. The other thing is, um, just make sure you get those ears out before you, you start using it because you don't want to do that to your ears, right? Um, so this is the correct order. It is prong, sorry baby, e-collar, and then whatever other collars you have, flea, or uh, for her, it's a flat collar. Now, that safety clip right here is, is very, very important, okay? So this safety clip needs clipped, this clip here needs clipped to a different collar, preferably not the e-collar, but if you don't have, if you only have the e-collar and the prong collar, that's okay because it's just for safety. It doesn't have any, any use um, or part of the mechanism of the prong collar. It is only for if the prong collar were to uh, uh, unattach itself because there are these little prongs uh, that slide together and they can very rarely uh, uh, slide apart <clears throat> so it's just safety i only ever want an off-leash dog when i know it's going to be off-leash and i can control the environment right so that safety clip go, goes to her flat collar here that way if this were to un undo i still have a leash on my dog okay very important very very safe um and so now this is over here 
Now the prong collar typically when I'm on the walk, I walk dogs on my left side here. So I want this out the right, I want the leash to come out the, the right side of her. I'm gonna be honest with you, this thing should be tight, okay? But it does have a little bit of, I can um, slide it around when I use both hands like that. So there is a little bit of play, not a lot. It's, it's not loose, because I see a lot of people have it way too loose. Now your dog coming home is already fitted, so you don't have to worry about adding or take away length. But there is a little bit of play. I can shuffle it around, um, and then through normal use, it kind of shuffles around sometimes. It's not the end of the world, because the way it works is activate, deactivate. I just want to be able to pull on that when I'm walking my dog. So if it's up high, or I just don't really like it on the wrong side. I don't want it on the left side of her when she's on the left side of me, because then I'm, I can't get a good communication out of it. I can't activate it appropriately. So just a reminder, prong collar close to the ears, the base of the skull. It's already fitted for your dog coming home. We then have the e-collar. Um, it is basically between nine and three o'clock on the neck, but never at six o'clock right on the trachea ever. And then if you have a flat collar on your dog, it's on lower down and your safety clip from your prong collar should always be attached, always. Every time that prong collar on, I better, you better have that safety on. It's very important, okay? The prong collar should only really be used on the walk when the dogs come home. You're not gonna be using it in the house. It's only on the walk and um, it's just such a fantastic communication tool. Um, and we'll go over the specific, specifics of how to use the e-collar and the prong collar together on the walk and different situations may arise where the prong collar can be used instead of the e-collar, but the main tool is that e-collar. Okay, good job. So Okay, so the, the last tool here is the uh, slip lead. Hey, sweetie. Is the slip lead, okay? So this will be your main tool for inside the house if you still need that, that leash guidance with your dog when you come home. Uh, some dogs, when they come home, have these really strong associations with both the owner and the environment that you still need to give guidance with this while still communicating with the e-collar, and that's all perfectly fine and understandable. So in the short term, you, you may need a leash long term as you train and earn your own stripes with the e-collar and your dog and you rebuild your relationship. Uh, this could probably fade away, especially in the house. <laughs> so how it gets put on. So she's on my left side here and I walk all dogs here on the left side. So, uh, and I encourage you to as well because it's less confusing for them once they start hand being handled by you. So it needs to look like an upside down P, okay? So this is the long, this is the leg of the P, that's the handle and that goes around her, okay? And it honestly, it, it takes the place of the prong collar, so it's up high, okay? I'm gonna pop this prong collar off so you can see it. So it's up high, okay? And, the, and the, all the ones that you'll go home with have a, have a little break on it, if you will. So it stays tight so the dog can't slip out of it, but it's not so tight that it's choking the dog, of course, right? So I wanna be able to say, hey, you know, you need to go in that set while I'm tapping the e-collar, which we'll get into the mechanics of all that. But this is the main tool for inside the house, okay? Um, and it's just a easy on, easy off leash that I don't need a special collar for. Uh, it also is just easy on, easy off. If I'm going to the vet, I put this on my dogs in the e-collar, uh, prong collar too if you need, or prong collar instead of this, absolutely, that's fine. It's a better, it, it's good for corrections and different, better communication that way, that's absolutely fine. Uh, this is just nice and easier on the house, okay? But you have to realize there's a safety concern. If this gets caught and pulls on something and you don't know, it, it will constrict your dog. So it's never to be used without your supervision. Same thing. With the prong collar never ever in the crate and never ever without supervision okay ever also if i take my dogs and i'm gonna let them run around a little bit more freedom this comes off okay because this can get caught um, this can get caught on things and, and that's just never a good situation also this never gets used inside the crate because it can get caught on the side of the wire crates that most people have so but all leashes are only under supervision okay all <clears throat> All the leashes you'll come home with are under supervision. Good job. And you never leave this on when you're not actively walking your dog. Never for long periods of time, ever. Okay? Sit. Sit. Good, see? Good girl. Good job, honey. Okay, so this concludes our prior to go home video 
for all board and train clients at Ace Dog Academy. So we went over the basics of pairing the remote and the collar of the e-collar, the charging ports and the rubber gaskets to keep them waterproof, to take that off at night, and if you're gone for an extended period of time and your dog is crate, to take it off then too. Uh, but most of the time I leave it on all day, if, even if, I, if I'm just gonna run out for a short errand, I'll leave it on. The prong collar's location on the neck, up high, behind the ears, is already fitted. Your dog is already fitted and has the right links. So you don't have to worry about if it's the right size or not. The use of the safety clip with that, the safety clip stays on the prong collar and attached to a separate collar, preferably a flat collar. The use of the prong collar only on walks. The use of um, the slip lead, sorry, the slip lead uh, is your main direction tool, right? Because the e-collar doesn't give directions and sometimes when dogs go home they get a little confused because your house is a big distraction, uh, you're a big distraction, sorry, and uh, it's a big environment. So it's years of, uh, potentially years of associations that you have to help your dog through. Now they know all the commands, hold them accountable, but sometimes they need that extra little guidance with that leash and the leash is the best training tool in the world that's ever been invented. Uh, second, or number one, number two is that e-collar. So use those together and help lightly guide your leash in the home, guide your dog in the home with that slip lead, okay? Uh, so those are just some of the basics that I wanted to go over so we can really focus on your dog, how to use the e-collar with your dog, the numbers, and uh, any little quirks we can go over and help your dog uh, win and be the dog you want them to be. Thank you.